the SCX24. We're starting with a C10 frame. This already has been modified, but we're gonna go ahead and replace the body with this guy here. These are the pieces you'll find in the battery tray. We have the left side, right side, battery tray, cab cover, and your hardware. Remove the shocks, and next we're gonna move the battery tray here. The battery tray only has four screws. It's gonna be one here, two, and then on the opposite side. Once those four screws come out, this literally just comes right off. The goal of this is we're trying to get rid of this U-shaped thing, which is the existing chassis, and we're gonna keep everything else. Next thing we're gonna do here is remove the ESC, and we're gonna have this screw here, as well as this one, and same thing on the other side. I have unscrewed it, but before we actually pull this tray off, we're gonna go ahead and remove these wires just so that it's not in the way. Remove the motor wire as well. Ideally, you don't pull it by the wire like I did. Pull it by the white thing if you can get a good handle on that. That should come freely. The only thing left to remove the chassis is going to be these four screws. So we're gonna do that here on this side as well as the other four on the other side. So these outside ones are gonna be longer than the inside ones. Just make note of that for when you put it back in, the inside ones again are gonna be shorter. Now that those eight screws are off, this thing should come off. There we go. So now we've removed this piece and this is the old chassis. I've kept the lights on here because the new setup does not have a stock way to mount the lights. I'll figure out another way later or use another set of lights, but for now, this frame is just going to get out of the picture. And what we have left now is the innards. And this is all we need for putting the new frame together. We're going to go over lessons learned at the beginning of this video, even though I discovered at the end. That way, as you're putting this together and following along, you have this in mind. You can think about it. So there's that flat piece in here behind here that you can't see that holds the ESC and the battery. It's basically a tray. You're gonna to wanna to mount the battery strap on there before you secure it onto the body. Otherwise, it's really hard to feed through. Okay, so that's a mistake that I made. You wanna do that ahead of time before you mount it. The other thing is that this servo wire, I decided to fish through underneath here. And again, you're gonna do that before you put the tray in. That way you just have more clearance to put that all the way in. It's gonna come up the back and the ESC is gonna face in this direction where the servo wires are facing towards the back. And that allows the antenna to face forward, which may or may not be what you wanna do. But the holes that we're gonna to use to mount the tray are going to be in reference to this circle. This first column, it's gonna be the, the second hole, okay? So this circle is gonna be the second hole in the first column. In the rear, you can see there's a set of eight holes and we use the back right, okay? We're facing the left side here. So this is gonna be the back right. And the shocks you can mount wherever, that's the reason for all these holes. It just kind of gives you some flexibility. And that is it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started doing this, but I wanted to show you kind of some lessons learned so you don't have to take stuff apart, put it back together like I did when I was doing this at first. And you will have leftover hardware, which is fine. You can reuse the hardware from your original chassis. And at the end, you will have three of these bars left over that do not have holes in them on the faces. Okay. So there's the difference between left and right. This is gonna be the left side. This is gonna be the front, the rear, and how you tell is the silver exposed part, the bezeled part is gonna be exposed. So this is gonna be the inside, and this is gonna be the outside. We're gonna put this together in kind of the reverse way that we took it apart. So last thing we did was remove these four screws and we're gonna put the new ones back in. I'm just gonna show you here so you can see which holes are aligned. So you can tell which holes on the frame align with these guys. So we're going to use this one, this one, this one, and that one. And they're going to line on those screws. So you can see those two center screws aren't, or two center holes rather, aren't going to be used. 
and that's I'm talking about this hole right here and this hole is not used for screws what what those holes are for is to secure onto the frame itself and you can see right here there's these little nubs and that's gonna go in there so it's basically gonna sit like this and then the screws are gonna go into these outer two holes. And the long ones are gonna go on the outsides, and then the short ones are gonna go on the insides. Don't forget that when you're screwing this in, you're gonna to need to make sure that you're also screwing the link back in place right there, okay? Because this thing's gonna to wanna to kind of move around. The easiest way I found to do that is to go ahead and align it first, and you're gonna hold the frame like this with your thumb just kind of holding the screw in place. And then that way you can just kind of push that in there and then everything else will fall into place. We're not gonna do it too tight, that way you can still kind of move it around and then you can tighten again at the end. We're gonna go ahead and put the second side of the frame on before we get to the bar portion. Exact same thing, we're just gonna do it on the opposite side here. We will need to later worry about aligning these drive shafts and getting them back in place, but there's enough play here before you put the suspension in for us to do that. But we're gonna worry about that later just so we have some maneuverability with this unit because it's a little bit uh, clunky and hard to work with otherwise. The hardware pieces come with four solid tubes, okay? So there is a threaded thing hole on each end and then it's just solid. Okay, so these are four. And then here we have five. They're the same length, okay? But these ones have two holes on the face, okay? So what these two holes are for is to align with the base plate that holds your ESC and battery tray. So these need to go underneath to align, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in the frame for this to rest on top of, and then we can screw those down and secure them. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out exactly where this piece goes. And again, the holes need to line up and down. Bottom right one. All right, so by pre-installing the two side plates, we can easily kind of wedge this in here so that we can just, it's just easier to hold. And we're gonna take one of the hardware pieces I, and it should go in very easily. If it's not, then you're cross-threading or something's not aligned. So we need the holes to face upwards. Like that, we can see these two holes here facing up. Before we put the other tube in, we're actually gonna secure this into that tube that we just installed. Tapered screws that come with the kit. Because that screw is thicker, it's gonna need a bigger hole, and so this is gonna be a 1.5 millimeter wrench to get that in here. So the way the battery strap goes in is you're gonna there's these two openings right here, those thin ones, the top here. We're gonna fish that in and this is gonna go up through there. So that's how that's gonna look like. Once you have that in place, fish the servo wire back through here. So we're gonna keep this open, fish this up underneath like such. And the servo wire will come up here and plug in like that. Then we're gonna pop this back down. So before we install the shocks, remember we need to align the drive shafts. Because once we install the shocks, the drive shafts are gonna be have a hard time. We're gonna have a hard time aligning the drive shafts. So I am going to put a photo up on the screen of how the drive shaft needs to align because you can't just stick it in randomly. There is gonna be a particular angle in which you need to do it and we're not gonna be able to see it that clearly in the camera here. So we're gonna put a picture probably right about here. I'm gonna to attempt to show you how the drive shafts need to align. Hopefully this will just kind of make it a little bit more clear with the photo we had earlier. But basically this drive shaft from the main piece has this tab that comes up, right? And then this is attached to this piece. And so this needs to mirror that. 
So think of it as like a dog bone. So this is the tab and then the tab continues. This tab can't be rotated for, uh, 90 degrees or it's just, it's gonna create some binding and it's not gonna articulate the way it needs to. So again, tab, tab. We have two more of the solid tubes, the ones without the holes, no holes. And what these are for are, it's gonna be in a place wherever you decide to mount your shocks. Because when, when you mount your shocks, you're gonna need to screw something in that's threaded. And since this is just a hole on these side panels, there's nothing that's threaded. So it's gonna go through the side plate and then into this tube wherever you decide to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead off camera and just kind of pick a location. Solid tube, plate, and in the hardware kit are included are these little brass bushings. And it's basically like a spacer. And so that piece is gonna go between the shock and the plate. And that just, again, it just adds as a spacer. Because when you go like this, there's a tiny little gap right there. So this just fills in that gap. For the shocks, we're gonna go ahead and use the medium-sized screw as opposed to the long or the short. And we're gonna use this guy right here. Now we have the battery strap in, we've fished the servo wire through the cage, out through the back here. Right now, this is just double stuck tape to the tray. So we're just gonna use a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry that off so that we don't break the tray in case we wanna pop that back on the original chassis later. That took about three minutes to just uh, clean up with my fingernails. I'm going to go ahead and put some new double stick tape on there. But before I attach it, I'm just going to test fit and see where we're going to put all the electronics. The way I'm going to do this is have the receiver facing forward with the motor and battery ports on the left side of the car. The yellow wire is going to be on top into the steering servo like this or sorry, into the ESC. And that's gonna sit right there with the motor plugged in here and the battery in there. So we're gonna go ahead and situate this using that double stick tape. So I'm situating the ESC just so that there's enough of a gap for this wire to fish through that hole of the deck. Next, we're gonna have the canopy. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have these two leftover tubes with the holes in them. And we're gonna align that as so. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw from the top into there. Pop that on there, put four screws, one there, one there, and same on the other side. This size screw. Okay, this means we are finished with the installation, finally. We're gonna go over the holes one more time because that's probably what's most concerning. So just to summarize, we're gonna do the two outer holes, this guy and this guy with the longer screws. And then the middle ones are gonna be the shorter screws. And I reuse the same hardware that came with the C10, the original frame. So you could do that too and you'll just have leftover screws as a backup. And the next set of holes that hold the deck in place is gonna be of these eight. It's gonna be this bottom right on this left side panel. And then for the front of the deck, we see this oval and it's gonna be that middle one of the first column. 
and then the shocks you can put wherever you like and probably experiment. All right, congratulations. We are finally done with this. So lessons learned is to put the strap in place before you put the deck on. You can skip this bar so that you have more clearance. And the electronics, I situated with the servo coming up through the back, which means the wires feed underneath the deck through the frame and comes up into there. Battery situated here, and you do have to remove the canopy, unfortunately, to fit the battery in. There we go, congratulations. So we're gonna see what's left over as far as hardware. This is all the hardware that's left. So if you have leftover hardware, do not be alarmed. The black ones are the stock ones and the silver ones are the ones that are from the kit. So what's left is three solid tubes, one of which was supposed to go here. And the other two, I'm actually not sure. I suppose you could pre-install these guys at locations where you think you may want to adjust the shocks. So that way you don't have to put the tube back in later. Don't be intimidated by the install. Just take it step by step. If you've never done this before, I know it can look a little intimidating, but follow the instructions, go ahead and rewind. If you have any questions, feel free to leave